Hey, did you hear Interpower says it has a one week manufacturing lead time? Really? Yeah, anything, custom, one week. Is that so? Yeah. Today on Engineering Newswire, we're traveling in our very own solar-powered pods, picking up space garbage and wreaking havoc in extreme off-road testing. Back in 1999, a company named JPods was founded with the aim of designing and building computerized personal rapid transport networks that could be solar powered. The company claims their pod system is safer, faster, cleaner, and more affordable than using cars, buses, or rails. Well, after a decade and a half of designing and raising funds, the company is finally making plans to test their personal rapid transport system in Secaucus, New Jersey this fall. According to the company, they eventually plan to deploy networks of horizontal elevators that provide short to medium range travel using super light computer controlled vehicles that are suspended from rail mounted on elevator structures. The system will be electrically powered with solar collectors mounted on the overhead rails to absorb sunlight. Each pod car could hold about one to six people or a cargo pallet. And since the pods are solar powered, there would be no CO2 emissions. In fact, the pods only use about 10% the energy per passenger mile that is required by current modes of urban transport, such as trains, buses, or cars. Each pod has a touchscreen, so anyone may redirect to another destination while en route. The software would basically handle everything. You just type in where you want to go and you're off. The vehicle control system utilizes this software to control speed and switch directions of each pod to avoid collisions at merge points along the guideway. So, if you're sick of waiting in traffic jams or just want to contribute to a greener world, this might be the solution for your city. After 10 days of testing, Lockheed Martin's Havoc 8x8 armored modular vehicle has successfully completed the Nevada Automotive Test Center's Butte Mountain Trail course a mile-long course and one of the most intense off-road test tracks in the world, it features nearly 1,000 feet of elevation change. Some of the rocky stretches of this course have disabled vehicles in the past, but after 40 runs up and down the mountain, the havoc didn't fail once. One might say that it wreaked havoc on the test. The testing was performed by Lockheed Martin in order to validate the vehicle as a potential solution to the Marines' need for a robust amphibious vehicle, in addition to testing its ride quality and crew comfort. Because comfort is always key. According to Patrick Shepard, Havoc Program Manager at Lockheed Martin Missiles and Fire Control, the most highly appreciated design feature was how quiet the vehicle interior was and the smoothness of the Havoc ride throughout the demonstration. The Marine Corps will conduct its own series of tests that will include 15 other Havoc vehicles for its Amphibious Combat Vehicle Program and will be releasing a request for proposals in early 2015. Don't litter! It's a simple saying and you would think the same logic would apply to space! Well, according to a leading space debris expert from the University of Southampton, Dr. Hugh Lewis, more CubeSat satellites are, don't do that, don't do that. According to Dr. Lewis, more 10 centimeter cubed satellites are hitting the high skies, which would cause quite a problem, particularly with our relaxed attitude to debris mitigation. Could lead to big problems for all space users, unless something is done soon, Alex, I am going to ask you one more time, one more time. At the 65th International Astronautical Congress, Dr. Lewis said that while CubeSats are helping companies break into the space data and communications industries, they don't have any maneuverability, so they can't avoid collisions or move to a disposal orbit in mission's end. You heard that right. Junkyards in the sky. Since 2005, CubeSats have been involved in more than 360,000 close calls which means they were less than five kilometers from other orbiting objects. Well, Dr. Lewis and his team used their debris analysis and monitoring architecture to the geosynchronous environment model to simulate future CubeSat launch traffic scenarios until the year 2043. By comparing these with data from the last eight years, the team found CubeSats to be involved in millions of close approaches, with a handful leading to a collision. Wait, did 
debris analysis and monitoring architecture to the geosynchronous environment? Because it spells garbage. Does it? Yeah, wait, no, what does it say? D damage, it spells damage, damage okay. yeah. Good thing I didn't go. Analysis of the close approaches found that most of the collision risk comes from high-speed encounters with large spacecraft. So just like bird strikes and planes, how about we all give a hoot and don't caps? Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Melissa Fossbender and this has been your Engineering Newswire. InnerPower has one week manufacturing lead. Any product, any quantity, one week.